Hi there and welcome to Barcelona. Thanks for joining me on today's show. I'll do my best to explain overloads. I may not get everything right, but I'm going to try and explain the terms and how we can use um, it to our advantage when we are playing the game, Football Manager. Now, the term overloads has been used in football for a while now. I mean, commentators use it, but usually when they use it, they, they talk about extra numbers in the box is overload but there's more to this than just that um, the term originated when people started talking about positional football juego de posicion if you you guys have done your reading then you probably have heard this term used many times um, lecturers from University of Porto Victor Frade you got Pep Guardiola you got Jurgen Klopp I mean I can go through the names there's so many okay Rayo Vallecano is a club that's famous for under Paco Jimenez I think Jimenez I think that's his name um, coaches like this have used uh, overloads as a concept within pos positional football, right? So what are overloads anyway? Well, overloads is an attempt for you to create a numerical advantage somewhere on the pitch in order for e in order for you to either control the pitch or you can draw players away from certain zones so that you can free up the zone for a third man attack. What do you mean by a third man attack? Well, just put it this way: you overload, you 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 hold you hold the ball in some way, you pass it around, you draw as many of the opposition players there, then you free up another flank and that's your third man because there's nobody marking him. So he goes in, he goes in to score a goal. So that's what I mean by the third man. If you go to these football times, you'll even see them, you'll read an article about Mauricio Sarri's Napoli tactic and you'll even understand what they mean there by his use of overloading. Now what exactly does overload entail overload is something that we have to understand because it can occur in any third of the pitch you've got three thirds right your defensive third your middle third and your final third well an overload is something that can happen in all three thirds ideally you want to create one for yourself when it depends on where the ball is but you always want to have that numerical advantage all the time in all the thirds so in a 2-5 configuration what i mean by a 2-5 configuration is when your two fullbacks push into a three-man midfield creating a five-man midfield so like in this example here we've got these uh, two fullbacks and they have moved into midfield and what we now have is a five-man midfield so if the ball gets cleared by the opposition it lands in the midfield you have a numerical advantage there and it'll play very strong against a two-man midfield or if the ai doesn't have time to build play up this is why overloading is important here we have overloaded the midfield area if my if the ball is with the if the ball is with the opposition the opposition goal then what i want to do is apply pressure using opposition instructions or play instructions or the two of them with a combination of defensive line apply pressure on them so they don't have time to play the ball out when they clear the ball my overloaded midfield has the advantage against the ai so overloading is a concept where we have to try and understand how it applies across the you know the three thirds of the pitch because we want to create an advantage in specific areas of the pitch there are also other configurations you're going to have a three four configuration uh, for your back line where you would have one fullback pushing up and the other fullback is on a defend duty this would mean that when you are going through a midfield transition you have a, f a four guys in midfield now the reason why um you would sometimes see the fullback on defend push up and sometimes cross the ball or get involved in crossing the ball is because the fullback on defense will only do that if you have camped in your positions half and you're creating those kind of opportunities. Other than that, most of the time you will see your fullbacks um, holding back. Now, you can also give the fullback um, who want, you want playing on a defense duty, tell him never to go forward in the whole position. You can give him that player trait, get him to learn that player trait, and that player trait will override a lot of instructions in the game. So you can also do that. Now, in the 2 5 configuration and the 3 4 configuration, we're talking about creating overloads in midfield, right? So you're pushing players up into midfield. Overloads always have to account for the position of the ball. So whenever the ball gets into the defensive third or the middle third or the final third, you want to be in a position where you have an overload strategy to control possession of the ball. Like, And you would see this very clearly in your stats. When you play any game, you should be able to see action zones that indicate that you have had control of all thirds. Like here, we have control possession in each third of the pitch. This would mean that... Um, Whenever the whenever the ball moves into my defensive third, I have the numbers there to make it hard for the AI. 
uh, when the ball goes into midfield, I have the numbers there to hold possession. And then when I'm in the final third, I have enough numbers there to draw the team around and create goal scoring chances for myself. So an overload, overloading isn't about sh just simply putting players into more players into the final third. It's about using a using a system intelligently. Overloading is relative to the tactics that you play. So a lot of tactics in the game give you the option of creating overloads. The 4 2 3 one is one tactic that allows overloads to happen in the mid main midfield if you have support duties here. Um, they allow you to have overloads in defense if you have the right combination of roles and duties here. Uh, and you can also control the final third if you have the right kind of roles and duties here pushing up. So the whole goal here is for you to create a tactic that allows you to create those kind of overloads. And to do that, you need several things. The first thing you need, your team has to be able to keep the ball. They have to be able to retain possession of the ball. They have to be able to move the ball around. doesn't matter if you want to play a direct style or a, you know, a patient style of football. You need players who have good composure to hold on to the ball. They need to have solid support duties in the overload areas. So if you're overloading the left side of the pitch, then all there have to be quite a number of players that will support duties. And you probably will need a player there who can actually find, you know, make the pass. So an attacking playmaker there, a playmaker there who can thread those kind of passes with the right player traits, like look killer balls, switches ball to the other flank. The other thing you will need to make sure is that these players who are in your support role, all of them have to have off the ball. You know, basically they all most of them will need a good dose of off the ball. They have to be they have to uh, give the person who has the ball the option of making a pass the, these players will need to be moving around giving him these kind of options players who are the third man the one who's attacking the space they need acceleration they need the awareness the right duty and the right role like i love to use like wingers on attack inside forwards on attack a round out on attack to attack those kind of spaces which are left vacant um, when i have an overload strategy that works Juego de posición or positional football, one of the tenets of that little philosophy that actually led to all this overloading things that you see. I mean, coaches like Pep Guardiola are famous for it. Jose Mourinho uses it. So many coaches use it. Well, the fun, one of the fundamental tenets is different heights. What, what do we mean? When you look at your players along the pitch, uh, the length of the pitch from here to here, what you want to see is your players are going to be positioned in such a way that they're all at different heights from each other like and this will allow you to create passing options when the a player has the ball different heights in the game are going to be largely created by duties when number four has got the ball what i want to be paying attention to is how 13 8 and 5 react basically how the players around him react are they going to offer him good passing options as the ball moves to the central defender my attention is focused squarely on the other duties and how they offer passing options. This allows me to assess whether my overload system is working, whether or not we are allowing for better ball retention by offering up more passing options. This clearly shows that we are overloading one side of the pitch. And as the ball moves to the other central defender, more the players drift closer to him to offer more passing options. This is how we want to deal with overloads. Whenever you're looking at an overload strategy, you've got to think about where the ball is on the pitch and how it relates to the other tactic that you're playing against. In real life, overloading poses a dilemma for the team that is defending. When a team attacks them through an overloading strategy, the defending team normally has a dilemma because those players that are caught in positions where there's the extra man attacking them, they have to decide, do I help my players who are being overloaded or do I take care of the guy who's coming down the flank? Overloads become something that I'm always paying attention to in real life when I'm watching a game. Now, if we want to get those overloads working in football manager, it's going to be quite a challenge because we can't spend all that time on the pitch training the players because we can't do that in the game, right? We can't do tactical periodization with this team and go like, okay, we got this match coming up, we're going to be playing against this tactic, therefore we have to prepare the game in such a way. That's what Jose Mourinho does. But we, we can't do that. We don't have that luxury. So we, we only have this game. So what can we do with this game? and get it to play the way we want it to. There are certain limitations to what we can do and what we can't do. So what are the things that we can't do? We can't train the team in 
playing us against a certain tactic the whole week and do rondos right with the with the, the players we can't do that so what we need to do is i spend a lot of time with uh, before a game if i'm if it's a particularly tough match and i know i need to score a goal against a defensively minded team match preparation lots of attacking movement if i'm playing against a team that's a uh, very good and i need my overloads in defense to work really well defensive positioning so that's my version of tactical periodization now what about the tactic itself now before we begin what we need to understand is remember the first part I said you need support duties in certain areas of the pitch now let's take a look at this example here I've got a 4-3-4-5-1 let's call this a 4-5-1 or a 4-3-3 this defense attacks like a 4-3-3 uh, defense like a 4-5-1 now when I want to keep ball, keep the ball I want to keep it in this area of the pitch so I have got Diff players at different heights. I've got wing back support, defend duty, defend duty here, attacking duty, and a playmaker on support. Now, all these players have to have good first touch, decent first touch. So I've got this guy, Agostinho. His first touch is decent at 14. I've got uh, my Jackman, who's a defender. His first touch is also decent. It's about 13. So most of my players here all have decent first touch. The second thing I want to make sure is that these uh, roles and duties that I've put up here they allow me to stagger the way i pass the ball and to do that they've got different uh, duties i've got support here i've got defend duty i've got an attack duty of a support duty finally i'm choosing uh to get my players to play simple passes i don't need this group of players to do any hollywood passes so this guy uh you know he dribbles less he shoots less often this is the my unlocker. He's my playmate. He's one of my unlockers in my team. I would love to get him to dribble more because I would I actually want that in my team so that I can unlock more sides. I can drag players around with somebody dribbling. But because he can't dribble, he's been told to dribble less. He plays with more risky passes because of unlock sides this way. He also closes down more so that we can put some pressure during the offensive transition. Up here, I'm using a playmaker because playmakers are ball magnets. I've also told him to sit narrower. By asking him to sit narrower, I open up the flank for this guy to attack when an opportunity presents itself during the attacking transition. So during the defensive transition, I've got these guys back. During the midfield transition, this guy goes up, he supports this lot so we get extra numbers. This guy drops in, gives them an option. And then during the final third transition, this guy becomes the extra man if needed on the flanks. So we've got the overload strategy sorted with the duties. What happens next? What happens next is, I know that I'm going to be overloading this side. This, this, these players, they're going to have to pass the ball around. We're going to have to be patient. So I've got shorter passing across my team. But what happens to team inst uh, play instructions? Those play instructions who've got more risky passes, it overrides, right? They, they will try through balls. If I wanted to be even more... I, even more experimental, I'll go with direct passing. But here, I wanted to maintain that short passing style that we have. If I if I want somebody unlocking defenses, then I'll play players with player traits like uh, likes to switch ball to the other flank. Why? Here we got Ram Dauta on attack. He's an attack duty. So everybody here drops in. I've got an F9 that's dropping deep. I've got an attacking playmaker who's the ball magnet sitting narrower. So we're going to have a lot of congestion in this area of the pitch. And if I were to take one of my uh, matches and we were to look at the key pass combinations, this is what I will check in the game and before a game. I'll be looking at my key pass combinations. I want these players to be generating a lot of passes to each other. They've got 75, 73 going on over here. 36 from Marco Agostini, who's playing as a fullback. And my uh, and my DLP has got 40, pass com 40 passes. Even my defenders have 28 passes, almost level with my uh, fullbacks. And we have a lot of passing combinations between this entire group of players so that we can unleash this guy on the flank. And we can uh, we don't this Sergio Zuniga my fullback is more like a decoy fullback because I need uh, another fullback on the right flank so that it put, puts a dilemma on the AI because because now you got two players there and I've got one player attacking space it's always going to pose a dilemma to the uh, to any opposition whether regardless of whether it's an AI or real life but you see the same thing happen in real life. Now we have those support duties sorted we have a player now in this system i wanted this i chose an f9 why because we don't have this hole to we we're not really 
uh, controlling this pocket of space. So he will drop deep. So we actually have a very strong overload in this area. Even during the midfield transition, he becomes an extra man. So roles and duties is one way you can create overloads. Another way you can create overloads is using different roles. Like what if I wanted to make life a living hell for the AI? I could. I could just turn this guy to an inverted wing back. Then I'll have like a string of midfielders here who are clogging out space. This means that you, you got to be thinking all the time about the formations that you play against. There are some formations, if you're overloading, you got to look at the system that you're playing against. Where can you, where do you want to nullify their advantage? Against uh, against uh, Man City, they were playing a 4-2-3-1. We wanted to shut down number 17. We wanted to give them very few options to pass the ball. We did our homework on Man City. We discovered that their key pass combinations were on this side of the pitch which is their left. It would have been my right. So what we, what did we do? We This is where the second part of this whole strategy comes in. The second part of the strategy involves using either close down more as a PI on the back line or using opposition instructions on specific players. So in our system, where I do a combination of both, I have our opposition instructions on the back line. That's the first thing that I do so that we give them a dilemma. <laughs> Every time they get the ball, we try to close them down. If we lose the ball in their half, we'll close them down. So they're always under pressure. And this acts as well to shut down passing lanes because when you close down players, they, you know, you got some kind of pressing going on in the final third. Um, I'm always paying attention to uh, passing lanes being shut down as well. So I'm looking at that too. Uh, finally, the third part of this whole concoction of creating an overload strategy okay we've overloaded we've done the defensive part we've done the midfield part now what happens when the ai gets the ball when the ai gets the ball we want to make life very difficult so that's why we have opposition instructions on the fullback so we don't want to allow them to build play up from the back to make life even harder for them we have a defensive line now this becomes tough the defensive line is something they have to observe and we push our defensive line up so that my midfielders don't drop so deep to defend. This puts pressure on the second ball, uh, on the second ball clearance. So if they if they have um, they def if they are defending, and they have to they want to clear the ball from their defense and work the ball up to midfield, our opposition instructions or our play instructions that tell them to close down more are going to be combined with the defensive line that makes the playable area shallow. When the playable area becomes shallow, our overloading in midfield will allow us to pick up the second ball because they will be forced to clear the ball and we've seen that many, many times in the games that I've played. So the goal here in overloading is learning how to combine your roles and duties with your opposition instructions or play instructions and using your defensive line intelligently. Now, I do not use the defensive line. I hear my defensive line is slightly higher, but I'll be very, very careful if I change my shape. I was confident of using the defensive line at slightly high because I have a flexible shape. If I have a if I'm using a flexible shape or a structured shape or even a highly structured shape, I'm totally confident of using a defensive line pushed up. But if I was using a fluid shape or a very fluid shape, then my system is a bit more compressed. And I'll be very wary about using a pushed up D-line because my flanks might get open, especially if I'm playing on an attacking duty. The moment I play on an attacking duty, those flanks will open up very quickly because my players will commit early and I'll be in trouble. Because mentality affects the way we defend. You know, the width of, we're talking about teams that want to defend narrow. If you want to defend narrow, you play a defensive mentality. If you want to defend, if you don't want to defend narrow, then you play on a higher mentality. When you play on a higher mentality, you stop defending narrow. So these are all things that you have to consider when you want to build an overloading strategy. So the simple thing that you want to bear in mind when you want to do an overload strategy. First, always remember that you need to have the right, uh, you need to stagger your duties. Two, you need to make sure that those players can pass the ball. Three, you need to make sure that they have composure of the ball, that they can actually be under, they can pass the ball under pressure. Four, you need to make sure that there are players in this in the midfield tier who can unlock the zones that you are working so hard to create. Right, you you put all those players there to overload. Obviously, you want 
to unlock some part of the pitch. If you want to unlock some part of the pitch, have the right duties on that side of the pitch to unlock. Make sure that the player there is good enough to unlock those sides. Here we have a we only have this guy who's got acceleration 15. We just wanted him to go score goals. <laughs> the 17 and 14. That's all I wanted him to do. You know, get out there. You've got acceleration 15. You're a arm doubter. All you do, score the goal. If you can't score the ball, cross the ball. And uh, here we have uh, Costa. He doesn't really have a uh, very fantastic thing. So we told him not to, we, you know, told him he's, I like the Rom Dutta. He plays, uh, passes it shorter. And he also does few risky passes just to make sure that he doesn't try anything funny. So you're going to have to think about doing that. And finally, uh, use your defensive line and your opposition instructions or use your defensive line Opposition instructions combined with play instructions to get the effect that you want. And always pay attention to your transitions to see whether you're doing things right. You also need to remember that this overloading is, is relative to the tactic that you're playing against. So if you're playing against a tactic that's already overloaded, top heavy, then you have to think about how you're going to win the ball when you're defending. How you're going to prevent it, how you want to prevent them from playing the 4 2 3 one. like here uh, we have a 4 2 3 one that I played against against Man City so I had two options with this 4 2 3 one. option A do I allow them to play the ball from the back definitely not I'm not going to allow them to play the ball from the back opposition instructions on all of them close them down like hard we are going to make sure that they never play the ball then what did I do next? I made sure that this guy, Horta, didn't have a chance in hell of working the ball. So we closed him down. Did I close this guy down? No. We didn't close 16 down. We tackled him out. We tackled him out. And Iri going, we left him alone. We only tight. We didn't even tight mark him in this game because he's very, very fast. So all we did was we choked the supply route from here to here, this group. They hard tackle this guy, but our goal was very simple. The moment we take Horta and these four guys and put them under a lot of pressure, how are they going to string passes into our half? That's the way I play against a 4 2 3 1. I'll identify the style of 4 2 3 1 because most of the good 4 2 3 1s in the game play uh, by trying to overload you with uh, trying to get these players into your half. So we just choke their supply. We overloaded the pitch in the right area so that we could win the ball back with this tactic. Now, I can even do this with a 4-4-2. You can do this with a 4-1-3-2. You can do this with a lot of tactics. But the, the goal here is for you to decide how you want to overload with the tactic that you have in hand. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, there are so many more areas of overloading that need to be covered. And I'll be covering more and more of these in future shows for all of you. Once again, I'd like to thank you for supporting the channel. If you like this show, please subscribe. If you have any questions and if you want me to cover a different little topic, please ask and I'll try and do it. And uh, you can always look me up or at Twitter at addictedtofm.com. You can always look me up on Twitter at Busternet or addictedtofm.com. See, I've even forgotten my website. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank all my patrons for their continued support of this channel. You make these kind of shows very possible for the rest of the community and I'm sure they appreciate it. You guys take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.